Welcome back to another episode of Discipline Stoners. I'm your host, Eleven. My name is Winnie. And today we have a magical, mystical fairy of cannabis, a mirage of a human that I've seen dance around the 420 uh, space for for years now, but Winnie's going to introduce her properly. (laughs) An icon in the cannabis industry, Leafly Award winner, host, actor, model, and international author. It's our privilege to welcome Jackie Child. Hello. Hello, thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. That's a nice intro. <laughs> oh, my thank pleasure. Thank you so it much for facts. coming on the podcast. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> this is fun. I gotta say, you discipline stoner. Is that what? We yeah, are? yeah. We're like you. Literally, when he was asking me, like you know, we were talking about you and check you out and stuff, and it's like you are the epitome of a disciplined stoner. Like Ooh. that's like you know, you, you are what one, one of the ideals what I think of like a disciplined stoner you know so that's kind of part of our mission is to you know continuously show uh that you can have success and all those bright positive words and and discipline along with being a stoner you know that's mean you have to be a schlub (laughs) (laughs) although I quite love the sloth life (laughs) oh yeah we'd like to be a schlub sometimes but you know the elective ability to be disciplined is (laughs) Yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, I, I need cannabis to help me write and to get creative and stuff. So yeah. I mean, especially right now, like the weight of the world, the, our current situation, I couldn't imagine going through all this without cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really has been a gift through this last year. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm four years cannabis consuming, so I'm fairly new to this. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine where I would be if, uh, during all of this, where, if I couldn't just take a minute <laughs> yeah. yeah so you you've only been smoking weed or, or embracing the plant for four years now yeah um you crashed I was, right uh, into it <laughs> well I was brought up on like Nancy Reagan you know the this is your remember the frying pan and all that crap <laughs> I so, I said to her today it's like it's like there's a generation influenced by the Reagan administration definitely so and you know what now when I would say that now, as I've evolved, I've matured, I've become more political and more em- empathetic with the world. My eyes are just in a different, my eyes are open for the first time in my life. So when I say that I was born and raised on the Nancy Reagan, wow, that's a, that's a big giant statement as far as not only your cannabis and drugs and whatever, but racism and the way you, you know, the, the way you are raised and the way you're, you know, things we, what are just normal to us, which might not be very good. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So it's to, to, to have to go back, I'm 48 years old and sort of unlearn and relearn so much, mm. not only about cannabis, but just the entire world around us. Like, I oh. mean, yogis, I thought were crazy. Uh, vegan was like, they're starving to death. Um, they're, you know, you know, pot smokers, how lazy they're drug addicts. They're, you know, like, just, yes, I had to, unlearn wow. and relearn everything so when I tell people like when people are like what have you been up to over COVID or what have you been doing to whatever a lot of relearning and unlearning a lot <laughs> wow that's so huge we talk about that a lot on the show of having the will uh to to not only get a, a second like wind at life when you change your perspective but to slowly learn those new spaces with like a fresh slate like that like takes almost so much courage up to the center of you to like face those things that's amazing it's really weird to look back through my social media through the years and go oh my god no wonder so and so couldn't stand me or no wonder so and so thought I was a bitch like wow. some of the stuff I was like came out of such a a white privileged uh middle like just a real like I'm like not even who I am actually like not who I am at all no because your heart shines but I'm sure (laughs) even you just saying that is so cathartic for some people too just because it seems like sometimes hopeless like someone wouldn't but that sort of personal evolution is like so akin to the plants (laughs) yeah I mean that's the only difference in my life is I've added cannabis so the amount I've changed and the way our family has evolved and our relationships with my adult sons and everything Mm. like just all through cannabis has been it's been amazing and it's been something that 
I was just trying to find some relief for my Crohn's and trying to find a new way to deal with my depression and anxiety. Mm. And then what happened after was, is so mad, like so amazing. And it's, it's been such a journey that it's, it's weird. Like, I feel like one of those hokey <coughs> people trying to sell you on my yeah. snake oil or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> person (laughs) no but that's so real though when it can heal relationships like what you when you really start to see that and how deep it can help people just like let go and forgive and all that energy we hold in our body like cannabis really helps you just like get in there and go like let it and not only like when sometimes when we say you know oh who cares or let it go or you know been there done that we sort of brush things off I think we miss opportunities for growth and evolution. Like when I say let it go or, you know, no F's given or whatever, I I don't actually, like, I think we need to go through it. We need to come out on the other side. Like when we're in uncomfortable situations or when stuff is sort of pushing us a certain way, go through it, like feel it. And cannabis, unlike other, like, if we were going to call it a drug, right? Stimulants, stimulants, yeah. Stimulants, exactly actually allows you to feel it I know we talk about sort of you know it numbs you or whatever no I don't believe it does I believe I feel everything like I mean my relationships as far as like my loving relationships and my real close intimate friendships they are tighter and stronger and different than I've ever had well they they allow you to say the real thing and as you were mentioning not being afraid of the pain we talk about all the time it's called using the contrast and not ducking away from it but going towards it and through it and if you can tell your friend hey this is honestly just how I feel right now because you're just like not trying to cover that up it's like so incredibly freeing to be that vulnerable you're right you you do almost feel more so yeah. see, I am that person always, and social media doesn't actually welcome that. They don't, you're not like, <laughs> oh, she's so honest. It's like, yeah. she's a big bitch. What is she trying to say? Like when I come to you and say, I'm no expert, I'm extremely flawed, I have mental illness, I'm struggling here, and then I present something to you and you just come at me and trash. I've just told you who I am and where I'm at. Meet me there help me hold my hand yeah but that's know? a that's that's a lot to even ask of like anyone to have that much self-awareness <laughs> and compassion. on twitter yeah <laughs> my god oh that's so dope i love that no i can tell yeah i can i can tell by even the energy not just that you put forward at events and and who you are and getting the pleasure to meet you But like, even from the stuff that you post online, like I can tell you really do appreciate and connect with the plant that you like are one with it, like the energy of it. You are like through and through being full human that has embraced this plant. And I love that. I commend you for that. I think that's important. I think that's so important to stand beside it like that and like be like that. I have spent more time in the garden the last four years than I have at the mall. (laughs) (laughs) That's beautiful. I think I've come a long way. (laughs) Oh, I think that's a lot of people's goals. (laughs) It's, it's definitely, I mean, I didn't even realize it was mine. I would laugh at, I would just did a post today about my Crocs. I laughed at people that wore comfortable shoes. I would laugh at the green, you know, I'm not a green thumb. I'll hire one, like just stupid things. And to actually to do what I do now and to be, I'm so lucky to, to, I mean, first of all, Canada, it's legal ish. Um, and to be able to grow and to be able to do all the stuff with like, it, what an honor, what a privilege. Like yeah. it's, I'm, I'm pretty freaking happy. And even with the drama surrounding social media cannabis influencers that's um, what it's for though like social media is just for that like i've started doing food content because like even my freestyle raps like they like fucking offend people and i do food content now and i'm like guess who that offended no one you know what i mean because unless literally unless you're doing food or like you know what i mean like it's like it's it's brutal it's kind of like what it's for so yeah <laughs> think when you like try and share a thought or feeling or you share your art or your passion and people come at you in one way or another like you've offended or you've hurt or you're like I wish we could just oh just celebrate each of us yeah 
that are. I think that we're getting there. I think that the the conflicts lately have probably gotten like too much to the point where we're realizing like, oh man, this is just smack talk. If this person was in the room, I wouldn't even react like that. Like I don't even hate them. I think that it's gone so far that we we will start to show more kindness. But ultimately, I've had you know, people along with like friends of ours, like Matt and stuff like that. Like if you actually say, Hey, you know, whatever the person's name is in their handle, uh, yeah. like, how are you feeling today? Like, are you feeling hurt? Like, you know, like these are just hurt people wanting to hurt people. And if, if you even let them feel seen for a minute, like usually they'll like, Oh my God, I didn't know you read your comments. Like, you know, they'll usually like, <laughs> yeah, usually, but like sometimes, and then if it's, you'll never be critiqued by anyone doing more than you you know i, I just saw that truly that quote. believe that like because they know how hard it is and how brave you have to be to even put something out and like dude i mean being a rapper it's like that's you know coming up when you're not like as polished like that's some people's bread and butter to just get on there and like bully you if you're you know and it's like yo take it for what it is or literally just see how fucking sad these people are but i tell oh. you weed has oh. helped me with that I, in the community, in the cannabis community, there's some, some, I mean, there's like the OGs, people have been around forever. There's the celebrities, there's the whatever, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah, and it's then, its own and, ecosystem. And, and then who's this that just sort of comes relatively new and I'm getting these awards and I'm winning the, and it's just, I'm assuming, I mean, it's nauseating to me. So I can imagine the people that are already on the fence <laughs> <laughs> are like, who the this is this? <laughs> um she's nobody don't worry so <laughs> yeah I just there's this such a tug of war and a love hate in the community and the culture of it and it, I mean that's not what cannabis is it's not about no nah, but that's the politics of everything it's oh. always gonna get political there's no way around it which I try my hardest. Like I just said this last year, I stepped away all these nominations and stuff for this, for 2021 and 2022. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. thank you. Do you know, there's a lot of really great people coming up. There's newer, smaller micro influencers. There's people that, you know, are actual experts. They have an education behind it. I'm passing that along. Like I've had it. I've had wow. enough. I, I've had more than my share um because i don't need an award the reward what, what, is what do you think that what do you sorry to cut you off but what do you think the reaction about you was what what have you like figured out your own value of like what you've contributed um to the oh. culture like why well, do you think everyone you responded think to you that way so negatively no because no I'm, no 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 uh, no 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 really well like you're saying you, oh, okay. you you did get some publicity, some acclamations and, and coverage well, and stuff think, like that. What I do you think, think beginning, cannabis think wants from you? The, I think in the beginning, the positiveness and yeah. the big yay that came right at the beginning. Because I heard it too. I, just because I was a different face. Um, yeah. Cannabis, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. Yeah. And I've obviously had a lot of work done, which is, you know, like, I'm not your, like, I'm not your, Whatever. I look like a lady who whines instead of weeds. You know what I mean? Like, a, <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> so that's exact. So I'm glad that you know your value. I mean, you're, you're being less kind to yourself than I would be. Uh, but, <laughs> but essentially, yeah, I like at the snap value is like, yeah, you look different than what they would expect. And that's right. so important. Like no one thinks like their hot mom's going to pull out a joint. Like and just exactly like, you know, so it's like, this is amazing. <laughs> and there she is. <laughs> and, or at Lululemon, someone says, somebody in here smells like weed. And I'm like, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> And be so open about it. And so honestly, you're a gift. So <laughs> by, by, I mean, that's really cool that like you want to like share that coverage and stuff. But like, if people want to position you as a as a leader in the culture you should definitely let them at least do it with your image or the idea of you because i think it it needs that like i grew up in vancouver where 420 i i started going to 420 at the gallery because it was such a cool congregation of cool people but from the outside it's very easy to judge if mm -hmm. if, if someone was measuring by classic uh you know aesthetic Stigma? standards yeah mm -hmm. like there's stigmas around it but like literally even the people who were being brave enough to stand with it 
they all looked like university dropouts. Like they all looked like people who only wore like, you know, trench coats, trench coats or like that dark green color that those pants are. I don't <laughs> they have satchel bags. Like they all look like they smell kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yes, but then you come it. out here and it's like, bam, Hugo boss, you know, and you're like kind of, you know, giving this new energy slash new life slash new perception to like the association of this product through culture. So I think that's really powerful, but it's really cool of you to want to share and expose others. But I think there's probably a reason that um, isn't even selfish or, or self-centered for you to allow people to kind of position you as that because it associates you with the culture. Hmm. I'm trying to think what's my bigger, my bigger purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're living it probably. I don't know, but no, there's always yeah. something else. There's always something else. <laughs> That's dope. I, I like that we're going on all these weird tangents because I'm just going to get higher. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what this is. That's, that's what this is. Um, Winnie doesn't look like a stoner. I know. That's why I love it. I'm fascinated with well, you. Similarly, why I dragged her into this with me. Yeah, I think I think I've always had. Uh, uh, I'm still pretty timid with it on like online and just in my everyday. Um, I'm not timid with smoking it. I'm I'm timid with sharing it. Which is um, which is totally fine, right? It's personal. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big public. I started sharing my conversations around CBD because I have Crohn's disease and my anxiety and depression was so bad. And, you know, I was, I was freaking talking about sex, drugs and rock and roll all the time. And I was like, why don't I, I've built this platform on TNA and all this stuff that's not even real. Why don't I shift it to something that now that it's here and now that all the eyes and ears are here, why don't I add something meaningful to this story? Like show mm. my real struggles and tell them how I'm really doing and what I'm using and what I'm cope how I'm coping. That is yeah. so nice that you did that. What what was the point that made you do that? Like that what was that realization what brought that on? Um de uh, my depression was really bad. My in-laws are in their late 70s. And they kept asking me to try CBD oil. Or really? CBD. Yeah. And I, I always blew it off. I always blew it off. And then one time they live in Arizona and then my father-in-law came and he had brought some CBD oil and he left it up on top of my refrigerator. And he said, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I know you know how to do the research and whatever. I know you're not, you don't like cannabis and you don't want to use it and whatever, but it's there if you want to try it, if you see if it helps. And from oh. the first, from the, just the CBD, um, I started infusing food because I didn't want to smoke. I didn't want to smoke. I was infusing food with CBD, then added some THC, started making my own edibles. We started juicing because I, I was growing, started, then I was growing my, like it was a, and it was a fast progression into this whole lifestyle. Yes. And, but it never, but I purposely, I think I purposely did this. I as much as I love one is great, 10 is more or is better. <laughs> I purposely didn't dive into like the dabs and massive bong rips and all that. I wanted to try and stay as close to the like health and wellness. I was going to make it like green. I was going to add plant-based living, plant life, plant medicine to my mm. life. And it just evolved into what it is now. And now I probably have cannabis earrings on or a necklace <laughs> THC or yes. I have a hoodie on every single day and it brings up a conversation with someone so even though I'm not at the award shows or I'm not like I make I don't love all that stuff I make a, a, a purposeful uh, a, I do it consciously to be an advocate for cannabis every day everywhere I go yeah so, and that has nothing to do with social media ha most of the way I support this community and the plant isn't even shared on can on social media because how am I any more of look at me look at me look what I did look at the do you does anyone need to see but purposely <laughs> by wearing even like I wear like a stash bag as a purse and have yes. a lot and, has it, and lots of ladies at Walmart ladies at the grocery store they mention it when I'm traveling with it, they're like, oh, you have a locked purse. And I explain, oh, it's for my cannabis and, da, 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 and it's legal. And, and this is, I always use. So, and I think I show up 
pretty against the stigma or the stereotype. So I like a new normal, a new face. I and- love that so much. I have a little yeah. uh, leather bag too that I carry around. Of course you <laughs> and do. I love talking. Yeah, I like. And it was actually a makeup bag that she got like as a gift with one of those free gifts yeah. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it, and I have like usually like you know like seven grams of weed in there and some rollies, and I'll just like start talking about it. I love that. Yeah. I can. That's what I'm saying. I can sense that. I can smell that from your attitude, <laughs> like based on like how with it you are. That's so lit. I yeah. love that. Thank and you. And honestly, it's very brave. So like. I, I hope to get to that point yeah Absolutely. see I didn't even I didn't realize again with my in my own world all the time and I guess like with my I, depression and anxiety keeps you really busy upstairs um you know like it keeps a lot going on here so I didn't even realize that it was like brave or so bold to talk about it as much as I did until I started losing my mainstream sponsors, yeah, um, family and friends, a lot of like the bread and butter, how I earned my living and how I lived my everyday life all was vanishing. <laughs> I <laughs> know. What the so, fuck is with that? So that was when I realized that, wow, you know, the way I was brought up, many other people were brought up that way too, and are still living that way and raising their children and their families that way. So it just, and then, I mean, traveling to the States and like trying to fly on an airplane, cross a border, do whatever, being so open and honest about who I am and having the social platforms into the millions, there is a massive stigma around the world about cannabis still. Yeah. um, no, I was in Indonesia and that shit is oh, legal, but you can get yeah. like uh opioid derivative. Like it's just bizarre how much stuff is available, like through pharmaceuticals even. And, and, uh, you know, there's another agenda and we're kind of early to the party, but it's always the early adapters that like really do have to carry the weight. But so some of those things that it risked and you did it anyway, you weren't even aware you were just being, you're like, I found this golden tool here's yeah. how it's making me happy and there was a consequence that came along with that that's fucked how did you like continue to stay I guess you it was into the cannabis industry it started to reward you or, or how like that was a hell of a um, risk how did you start to no. like regain traction so the cannabis industry does its best to reward you with stickers and hats <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and t-shirts and things so oh, no. I continued on, um, yeah. like I'm in a place of, uh, lots of different revenue streams. <laughs> okay. So, so I continued because how cannabis was changing me. I didn't think we could put a dollar amount on. And I had come from such a low, deep, depressive place. I was married before for 15 years. Okay. And I remember sitting and I say to a lot of people in my mansion in the Hill with everything that you could want um, jewelry, boats, kids, cars, fancy things, sitting in a laundry basket, crying to myself mm. that I, that I'm so unfulfilled and I'm so lost and my friends aren't my real friends. I wouldn't be my friend either. I'm so superficial and fake. I'm this, that my kids are not thriving. My relationship is not, not even good. It's not even okay. Mm. And just, Starting, I was thinking, I can't be the only person that has gone through this. And the glass has like the beautiful house, the way it's looking, it it's again, which is why I use my social media to to try and break stereotypes and perceptions and to be the look at me like this, and then I'll give you the next picture where I'm like on the floor because of my Crohn's or or having a panic attack or something. Like I I think we're the way we perceive one another and the way we just the way we look thanks to social media mostly I just wanted to make sure that how was I remembered or what was my legacy I've learned a lot about legacy through cannabis is that I was completely flawed but I tried my very best and I shared authentically and openly the best I can and hope that the people that come after me have it easier even just a little bit just a little bit definitely definitely 
And I mean, and I'm no expert in cannabis. No, even with all, it's all so personal. And it's all my own journey. I'm really like, um, I, I said the other day to someone, and I, I think I wrote it as well, that I'm really just a megaphone to what I learn from all of the experts in the industry. Um, so like, I, I come in peace. I'm not your competition. Yeah. I would, I, you know, I, you like, it's you all- got and meeting people like you and now I can share everything I've learned and I can share your journey and I can, we can be part of the same experience. And yeah. Yeah. Like I'm no, I'm no better or bigger than anybody else. No, and- the, the harmony is there and that's it. We all got to just open up and grow from each other. I think sometimes, you know, uh, we can get distracted from that fact, but that's ultimately like always the most fun part of everything is like collaborating. Like, you know, those, say- those moments. I want to say something about the other night and I thought about it a lot. Yeah. That when Matt came up to us or came up to me and said, do you remember me? Of course I remember you. Like, of course I know who you are. And it made me think for a second about how human we all, like the human experience and how we're all dealing with something. And that game again, that goes on in all of our heads, whether we're good enough, fast enough, strong enough, brave enough, whatever, it, enough. Yeah. And when he, when he said that, do you remember me? I was just like, I, we're, we're all trying to get our way, you know, trying to find our way in this, all of us, no matter how big, how small, how loud, how quiet, you know, we're all, we all really want the same basic things. Definitely. Yeah, we want to be. I think we always just want to be evolving. We seem to be a species that chases the challenge, whether we know it or not, whether we know that the country. I don't want my weed taxed. That's what I want. (laughs) Yeah, no tax on the weed, right? That's for sure. Fuck. (laughs) Yeah. Chad Chad never charged tax. (laughs) (laughs) Chad, yo, homie that pulls up at three says he's going to be there by three and he's there by four. But That's Chad so also cool. never gave me some free pre rolls, <laughs> right? <laughs> Rolling papers. <laughs> I know, yo. That event the other night was so fun. What was? What was, was it? Yeah, Jessica through that for uh, Canna yeah, so, Cabana, known. Yep. So Jess Moran, a very good friend of mine. She is. She's doing phenomenal Sweetheart. things. Sweetheart, she's partnering. awesome. And she's she throws a good party. Like she throws, she yeah. likes to bring in different mix. Like she likes to bring in people from the music industry. She likes people from the fashion industry. She likes people yeah. from the food industry. Like she likes the sort of this flavor. She adds this cult thing to oh, her. I she love makes, she does she, the playlist. She does the whole like because she's so into it. Like she's she, a perfect party thrower. She's like that when you watch the classic movie and it's like the popular college girl who's like nailing throwing this party. I'm like, I want that energy at my party leading it. And she is that <laughs> guiding feminine energy. I love it. She's also cute as heck. She's a little nugget of a person and she yeah. likes to wear glitter and dance all around. Like she's just all, so I mean, sweet. I think she, I, she's probably at least 15 years younger than me or 12 years younger than me or something. But like, all, all the power to her. She does these little. These are great ways to connect. It's and so needed after the last two years. Definitely. Um, yeah. I didn't go to any other parties or do any of the other stuff. Yeah, um, me neither. We had tickets to one, but we ended up yeah not not going and yeah. We had a. We were invited to quite a few, and I just I, I just didn't feel like it this yeah. year, and now, I thought. I- I went to this one off Jess's vibe because, you know, that's kind of the ecosystem I operate in, like with music and creative stuff, like in Los Angeles, like the States has that a lot, like people reaching out, building culture, connecting people. Matt actually complimented her on that. And it's like, this city needs some of that creative twist, bring some of that. She had Jordan, the chef who I know Jordan uh, from Joe Friday from doing the chef battles. And it's like, just oh, yeah. all, all these people who like you've seen around and it's like man this is nice it feels like a little I don't know reunion or something like that it it was pretty cool there was a lot of there was NFL players there there was NHL players there there was like it was she that was it was really really fun and it doesn't I mean as much as it gets overwhelming for me just because I'm a sweaty mess her (laughs) her parties are not like that you can just be who you are and have Uh, a good time I love that. Yo, sorry. I think how you just moved your phone blocked the speaker a little bit. Is that possible? No, is it now? Mm, is it a little uh, bit better? 
Am I too loud or too muted or too? It's uh, it's gotten like muted, ruffled a little bit. Can you pick the phone up for a minute? Yeah, I can pick it up for a lot of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just trying to see. Help? Did that, that help? Does that? Oh, that yeah. Better. Yeah, now it's coming back. Are you sure? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you. All right, I'll just hold it. Yeah, you guys talk. Let me listen. Well, <laughs> I well, I wanted to say I read your um kind uh question and answer article, and I thought that like I don't know, there was this one where you were like, there will be more than a twinkle in your eyes or something. You ended it like so poetically, um, and <laughs> and I also know that you've um you were a contributing writer to um ignite the inner warrior and mm -hmm. you were all you were just talking about writing before this so mm -hmm. i wanted to know if, what else like what writing you have on the go right now what are you writing up buddy so i do i do write for kind magazine originally they were monthly and then they were quarterly i believe they're back to monthly now so i do write the dear jackie column and where people write to me their questions about cannabis and intimacy or cannabis and i just finished one like right before um i hopped on the pod and they, it's fun. It's really interesting. Some questions will never make it to print. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are really weird. But no, <laughs> it's, it's been, it's fun. I really like doing that. Now, Ignite Your Inner Warrior, I wrote a few years ago. I was a co-author with um, 14 other women. And it was about your, just our struggles, however different in life and how you can be so low and come out on top or, or whatever your top is like it's so that was an amazing cathartic experience. Um, I would love to rewrite it in a different headspace now because I, um, at the time I was using and abusing pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. um, a lot. So my, like my self-talk was in a neg, I was in a really negative place. Um, although I felt empowered to share my voice, like to write, it was still a strangled voice. I was yeah. still not being completely honest. I was still uncomfortable with a lot of things. I didn't want people to consider me an addict. Uh. It, um, the, the story took several different twists and turns. It was originally just going to be a suicide note to my funeral or to my family. Uh. And it was just, a I had actually talked with the editor and the, the lady that helped co-write. And we, I was just going to sort of tell them like how deep and how much despair I was is in how much pain I was in and share the dark depth of all of that in this sort of anonymous suicide note and then I changed I started to talk about I'm moving so now you get to see my bathroom <laughs> <laughs> awesome. awesome anyhow so then I changed the story um to talk about my a, a marriage the end of my marriage and I had I was married for 15 years and I have two boys and then I thought I was giving my ex and the past too much weight in the story uh like so it was a different it was a real difficult mm. thing to write um it was six thousand or eight thousand words I think it came out well as well as can be expected but even then um there was so much going on in my life at the time that I think if I wrote it now in a much clearer headspace and a much more honest headspace, it would be even better because mm. it would just be, I don't like the word authentic because I mean, it was authentic. I wasn't lying, but it was just still, I was still afraid to tell mm -hmm. as much as I probably, as much as I should have and I, as much as I could have. And if it was really to help other people and it wasn't just about me or something, you know, self, whatever, Mm -hmm. I should have went deeper and I should have shared more. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. And that's, yeah. that goes hand in hand again with the courage to even share in the first place, but then being aware of where you are in your identity journey and how open you can be at that point. And yeah, we often feed into this narrative until we shatter everything. It's like, well, if this is so, I can't fully break that rule and we can feel trapped. Winnie's been developing her throat chakra more and more and been quite open about it on the progress of the podcast. So that's really cool. That takes years like yeah. to, to like start to like regenerate the, the new center point of energy and like 
tremendous painful practice. So kudos to you for finding these I've, new perspectives. I've noticed when I'm interviewing people, when I was doing with the Cannabis Wiki team that I worked with the media company, um, when we were doing our Green Room podcast, and then we were doing Highly Intimate, where I was talking to women from all different spaces that were on social media, and we were sharing, and they were beautiful conversations, and they were meaningful, and they were fun. Usually within an hour of them leaving, I would, could you please not air that? Could you edit oh. this? Could you edit that? Could you take this out? Is there any way we could not say oh. this? And that is the worst, because that is their like negative talk and self-doubt and not what, you know, like, and then it isn't a real conversation. Then it is again, censored and scripted and yeah, yeah, like, sorry, are we good? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, you're good. Sorry, I was just, I was just agreeing. I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, it, and it happens, it happened with the, like the bank managers and the big, the president of massive LPs. And it didn't matter, a librarian, a school teacher, a hairdresser. It didn't matter who I was talking to and how successful or how accomplished, how far along on their journeys they were, almost every single one of them did that afterwards. Almost every, like I'd say, I'd say 95% wanted it edited or not posted at all or not. Yeah. So you, like it just- do, do you think it's because they, they felt um, encouraged by like your will of the conversation while they were in it with you and then couldn't beat their own. So we like, we have a, a, a term for uh, when you go into self, you mentioned self-talk a couple of times, like mm -hmm. when you go into that self-doubt, we, we eventually start building up what we call on the podcast, the defenseman. And that's the good, you know, they're like, no, like you're good. They'll boost you back. But sometimes when that fucking heavy wave catches momentum and people get, get trapped in those thoughts, they, they want that shit taken out. Do you think that, they, yeah. they got extra hype with you? So during, yeah, while we're having the human experience, while we're having a conversation, yeah. we go in deep and we're like talking and that was really beautiful and meaningful and it, and it helped me a lot. Selfishly, it helped me a ton too. <laughs> oh yeah. Successful people struggle. <laughs> like, yeah, they struggled. And so like, yeah. it, it was relatable and real. And then, and then also to be driving home thinking how great a conversation that was and how meaningful that was and to get the call or the email to say please take that down that again i'm boss. reminding you know how human we are and how we're all dealing with something uh, oh. did you edit it did you end it up i would have so, said no no <laughs> There's one or two that I took down immediately because I felt that they weren't in their best headspace and mm. that I agreed with them mm. that it didn't do them. It didn't put them in the light that I was hoping for or that I knew they deserved. Like it wasn't, you know, That's was, nice. so, so one or two, I did that because it also costs a lot, like our production and the whole thing. So, and then a couple others, I was like, no, we're not taking it. There was no, uh, you agreed. Here's whatever. I'm not taking it down. This is your own self-talk and your negative, whatever. And promise you what will come after will be better than what you're thinking. That's so, it. and then it was, they would be like, Oh, people mentioned me. They said they, and some girls, like somebody said, they saw me on your podcast and I was so embarrassed. Blah, blah, blah. They were all like, cute. <laughs> like, see, wasn't that bad. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. It. <laughs> it can be scary to take that jump. Yeah. And, and we're always evolving our identities, our identities too. Like it's totally a fluid thing, but there definitely are those, those stakeholding parts of our identity that we consider pillars. And if we make a statement that goes against one of those pillars, we can just fall into a pit <laughs> of like trespassing regret, but this is all bullshit. This is all, this is not forward thought. So that's really good. I it's hate the word regret. I don't like the no, word regret. I know. Yeah, for sure. Yuck. I, uh, <laughs> I try really hard to, to have them as lessons or challenges. Exactly. Or not, like, I don't want regrets. This is um, value. Yeah. So. So. Uh, um, okay. I have some obvious to some, but I feel it would be helpful and useful to others of our audience members. Some questions that you might be able to shed some light on. For, okay for generally for like 
anxiety and stuff around weed, but I'm going to read them now. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, what is something that you might do or something that you know is good uh, if you get too high feeling and start getting like anxious if you're t- feeling too high? Well, there's lots of, there's, lo- I, um, there's lots of things to do. Um, mm-hmm. So they say, <laughs> yeah. I like to cool myself down. So whether that's um, go outside by myself for a minute, like sit on the step or the porch or to go off by myself and maybe take my hoodie off and have a glass of water just to cool myself down helps tremendously. Yeah. Um, it's also a thing from being just anxious, anxiety, and just to take your temperature down a little bit. They also say about the, there's peppercorns you could chew on, put lemon, but I have a CBD vape and CBD oil. Yeah. And they both have worked tremendously many times. So the trick is not to get too high in the first place, (laughs) 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 which you can't always avoid. No. (laughs) I mean, the one of the worst times I got high was I was doing a, it was a campaign for someone. They needed these pictures by three o'clock. The pictures that were sent by the photographer were not appropriate. They were not good. They didn't display whatever. So I'm smoking this blunt and by the time and taking these pictures. And by the time I was done this thing, I don't smoke tobacco anyway. And I was so messed up. Like, I, I, I hope yeah. your pictures are awesome. But I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm so going to throw up. <laughs> oh, your head spins yeah. from a blunt when you don't smoke it and you smoke it too fast. We totally know what that's about. Oh, yeah. man. Yucky, yucky, yucky. And then my very, <laughs> my very first public experience with cannabis, like on TV, like aired, I greened out. It, oh. was, an, it was an infused picnic with the naked news. <laughs> <laughs> disaster is the best word for that like tsunami of disaster one going into the next complete oh. nightmare <laughs> <laughs> i want to see this <laughs> but look it's in the archives i maybe i can send it to you it's a, oh my. it's an infused picnic with madison baines my friend from naked news and it was my first experience with edibles. And we think I consumed roughly 1,200 to 2,500 of kit milligrams throughout, it and threw about no. 16 hours for about over about 16 hour period. I was so sick. Wow. Oh my so God. Sick. And like yeah. there's selfies that don't even look like me. Like I literally morphed into something. Yeah. I'm like, your, fa- your face changes. Like even yeah. right now, I'm getting increasingly high just on joints and I'm getting a longer <laughs> face. <laughs> but like when you're edible high, the shit just like. Yeah. Like I had appetizer and then I had a salad that had a full, um, the full meal and the drink was infused. The meal was infused. The dessert was infused. Then there was oh like take homes and I'm talking to them while I'm eating the candy. <laughs> at no time, at no time did any of the tunas I work with tell me to calm down or slow down <laughs> or take up. At one point, a oh. camera guy way in the back took part of his headphones off and went, are you all right? That was about it. <laughs> that was about it. And it was a, like a near death experience. Oh my God. That's <laughs> yeah. so funny. I feel so like- I'm very, I mean, I'm very well versed in green outs now. So, yeah. I mean, take a minute to yourself, wa- listen to your breathing, cool yourself down, and just know you're going to be okay. No one's died from cannabis. They really haven't. Much Isn't that amazing? Yes. No. You, no you can get that. you can get so high that you fall to sleep and wake up still high for the day, but you won't die. <laughs> yeah. You won't die. No. You know so another nice. thing. A, a lot of times, um, I have friends that have trouble sleeping or menopause or whatever it is, and they, they've asked about edibles, so they've gone and got edibles, or I've sent them some edibles, or where to go, and nothing happens to them. But then the morning, they have their cough and their yogurt or their their bagel and cream cheese and they're high as heck yeah well the fat the reason you're high as heck is that fat just brought your edible back to life that just laid in your belly doing nothing all night because you're keto or whatever or whatever you are oh my (laughs) god yeah that's so oh yeah that's why it's great to have it with a dessert yes yeah exactly yes 
And also, oh. you know what? Like I'm looking at you two. Do you know what cannabis does to relationship? If I had have oh. known this a million years ago, like seriously, like the stoners oh. were all the cute guys and I was just afraid of them. I didn't know how to catch up. I didn't want to get a, burn my lip with a hot knife. I used to roll oil <laughs> on, I used to roll hash oil with a little safety pin for my boyfriend for like hours, but I never did. I, I didn't know how to inhale or anything. And oh, shit. If I did try my makeup, I'd look like Alice Cooper. And I was so <laughs> concerned about the way I looked and the way I <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just the, more, the biggest loser when it came to, to cannabis and pot smoking, that it took me all these years later to have the most amazing relationship with someone. And like, mm -hmm. and even what it has done with my boys and my friends, my friends in cannabis, like, I love having friends that can say, cut your shit, Jackie. Like, shit or get off. What the fuck's wrong with you? Like, they're like, and we're still best friends. Like, we have, my cannabis friends are just, oh, they're the yeah. real, they're the real freaking deal, man. Boy, yeah. they challenge me. <laughs> Definitely. It's very, I call it heartfelt living. It's like from the heart, you're, you're guided by like emotional intelligence yeah. and that's yeah. like, it should feel right first. And, and my, my, that. my kids and my husband, we have a, like, we live in Hamilton and there's a homeless person or persons pretty much on every street. And we have, we call them bum bars. That's probably not politically correct, but we have granola bars in our car and we have pre-rolls that we give out all oh. the time as we're driving. So it, cause oh. it, you know, they say, don't, you know, they're going to buy drugs with your money. And well, I'm going to give you some organically homegrown weed and I'm going to give you a granola bar. Here you go. Enjoy your day. Mm, that's so I know so you're, nice. you're high and you're not hungry. <laughs> oh, so, that's some motherly love right there. That's some the maternal kids, universe uh, love. Yeah. Like I just, oh God, the, I owe so many people sort of an apology and I owe them a different experience with me, a better experience. So like, I think if we can just do small little gestures like that, that we don't talk about on social media and that's not a big, but just things like that is, is, I mean, I read somewhere that homeless people and that people dealing with, you know, the, that are the, because of the opioid pandemic and I live in Hamilton, like I said, again, that they, people go months and months without even hearing their name and no one says their name to them or no one talks to them on that you know like it just so I we've been places near parks and stuff and I'm like hi I like your guitar do you want to join and they're all happy I'm like what's your name and I hand them the joint and just that yeah I know when they when I leave I'm going to be thinking about that that interaction and that experience and so are they it feels so, nice. It feels so nice to give. <laughs> yeah, yeah it really so does. It really, really does. And I think back to when I say how, you know, our legacies and how we'll be remembered. It's okay if I'm the plastic, oh, I think I, sorry. It's okay if you remember me as the plastic girl with the fake boobs or the overblown lips or the fake hair, whatever the hell it is. But I can guarantee you my in-person experience with me, you, like our in-person experience, you won't forget it. You won't. It's a, uh, I, I try my very hardest. That's why events like the other night were a little hard too, because I really try to engage and just, and have you be the only person in the room, even just for a minute. No, as I said, you shine with that mm -hmm. present moment stuff. So, you know, and, and through content too, but yeah, it's, it is <laughs> definitely a joy to have those experiences. Thank you for being a human that commits to that. Cause if we all just do that work, cause as you were saying, like it feels better, it is better. It benefits it your heart. It you're contributing to the world and yeah, whether anyone knows of it or not, it's really just like in that moment, you are bettering consciousness as experience. So that's, that's I, perfect. I wrote an article or I was interviewed for someone recently. And I said, if we could all just, if we, because it's up to us, it's not up to anyone else, anyone else, if we could make this whole experience in this place easier to ask for forgiveness or to apologize, can you imagine the shift in our world? Mm. Because I mean, we're all chasing some sort of clout or chasing something. If we could chase forgiveness and kindness, just imagine. imagine. Or, just, or just be it. I feel like you can be or it. Like you're going to, you got to like accept apologies you're never going to get and like give some apologies or, or just like 
where it's undeserving, give some apologies where it's undeserving because it's for you. It's who I am. Exactly. You can't swallow poison and expect someone else to die. Like when we're addicted to those chemicals that like, that like, because we we keep replaying it and we're going, oh, oh, I think you get energy throughout your day and you're like, oh, well, it's dark, but at least I'm going. And it's like, (laughs) What about getting, you know, feel this freeness? It's almost like there's a self-worth thing there, you know, like to let go and let God and be up and like, be happy. Let yourself be high all day. Let yourself let go. You know, like that's, oh, that's a big I'm I'm learning all that with the the psychedelic community and what I'm doing through psychedelics to just, why is high a negative? Why is a place of elevation, a, a state of elevation? Why is that a negative? Who said that? How did that start? It's different. Right? I think the humans were just getting on the same page for a while. So they, they were all like, if you stay low, I'll stay low. And we'll know where each other is at. And it's like, <laughs> nah, yeah. you know, but we, we got to, we're flying up now. More yeah. people are flying upwards and ascending. And that's why I say like, you shine. So yeah. keep shining, please. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're you're challenging the norms. Yeah. So it's a uh, such a it's important work <laughs> that you're doing, <laughs> which isn't always celebrated. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, it will be. I feel like it will be one day. Yes, I do. Um, but I, I mean, I mean, I don't know if this may have been sort of answered, but what should what should a person do if they're trying to start a conversation about weed to someone who they know doesn't fuck with weed oh it's against it yeah Mm -hmm. um that's pretty much my every day and (laughs) and i'm really 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 truthful and really honest and i do get upset um I'm not ups- well I get a little bit more heated behind like if you're standing there with a glass of wine and talking to me about my weed or if you are <laughs> one of my friends you know if you're one of my besties that's knee deep in her Xanax when you're telling me you know what a stoner loser I am or how this is so unproductive <laughs> or so stinky or so whatever like oh my goodness like yeah. I um yeah I talk honestly and openly about um cannabis and why I'm at it and I and I make sure especially the people that might be not on board like say a grandparent or someone much or you know just someone in a position of power of some sort that isn't on board i i actually i'm a medical patient first and i talk about how much and i am almost brag about how much it has brought to my life and my family's life and mm. i just you know and it's funny because without giving too many names or too much whatever but the uh, professions you'd be um, surprised or not (laughs) the professions the people that are in these certain professions that reach out to me for cannabis that they they want to grow it themselves or they don't want to buy it at the the legal store because they don't want you know their email or to give id because of whatever their jobs are you'd be really surprised of how many people are finally coming to the cannabis conversation and looking for other ways to 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 feel to feel good and to you know, or not even to feel good, to cope, to, I mean, no, well, it's a great way. Yeah, yeah. We, sh- we shouldn't, we, again, we shouldn't play into condemning the, the elevating of things. I think exactly. it's totally, it's important to prioritize feeling good. I don't want to deal with anyone that doesn't feel good. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That <laughs> is actually true. You know, when you were saying earlier about like, like, I don't know, like maybe haters or negative stuff or trolls or whatever. When I look through, because I keep all receipts, all receipts. So if you're going to have a nasty conversation with me, we should do it in person or over the phone because I keep everything. I've learned the hard way that I have to, unfortunately. But when I look through those, those conversations or I look through falling outs or things with trolls or haters, I can see where it went wrong or how it went wrong. But I can also see why they're hurting or where the hurt came from or where the and it's it's sad it's really sad and I've reached out to a couple of those people to try and right these wrongs some people just uh, my my big glittery mouth and my lab just triggers the worst in there yeah dude you can't I had a couple people just implode about like 
wanting to be a friend and not being able to access me and like that caused an implosion and it was like so obvious and like there's nothing right. you can do anything you say to them is just it, it is is they're hurt like you, exactly just the fact that you exist so it's like you have to just like allow them to flow right like, it's twisted anyway yeah anyway i have it you know yeah. and then I'm, I'm looking at them and they're this is another thing with social media and whatever they spread kindness and that's their hashtag and that's the way they live and they're doing yoga <laughs> and they're eating organic and they're whatever but you're they're like the worst troll in my life yeah so like i get confused with well, what does kindness mean we are we talking about know. the same person <laughs> yeah i think we might be down there. <laughs> no i'm telling you i feel you yes are we talking about the same person or oh there's fuck. A in the cannabis oh, industry. yeah oh man and anyway it's, and it's funny and and then uh, so like I look through their stuff and I'm like what the heck like if we're all wanting the same thing like how can we figure it out because if we're all creating these little fires within or do I just have to let them burn dude <laughs> people just yeah. want to be seen sometimes they've already tried like what they would think as a nice way but it just doesn't resonate and then then they try by hurting or maybe they don't even have the tools and to try the nice way at first and they only try and hurt. And I they- mean, I also think that people in the cannabis industry have like have been fighting for yeah, a really long time. So we have this like habit of fighting. And right. so for the first time, like it finally became legal. Ooh. And instead of like- There always really, has to be a like, problem. Figuring out how we can move that forward. It's just felt like a giant- fight this whole time Even for the like, last three years yeah you know? legacy markets like or... it, yeah we're all we're just fighting each other now so we're gonna need to evolve up when, out of that when certain big names sort of like ogs and they come out and go oh jackie's irrelevant and where was she and how does she like that happens on twitter all the time and i honestly <laughs> i throw right back at them you were right I was using abusing pharmaceuticals. I was in an abusive marriage. I was an alcoholic. I was this and that. You were right. Cannabis wins. You were right. I'm here now. Like, what more do you want? You know, like, that's dope. That's great. Like, yeah. Whatever. Just I show be, up. Exactly. I showed up. Yes, I'm late. And you, but you were right. You were toting this. I finally listened. It's, yeah. it, you know, it's changed my life for the better. And now I'm sharing it. And but that's again, a- I'm no expert and I'm not at the front of the line. We throw that queen word. I know if you're Googling me or if you're looking around, you see lots of people say queen of cannabis and queen of whatever. And that rubs people the wrong way because I'm fairly new and I'm not the queen of anything other than my own castle, you're, which is you know yeah. just a little townhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just needs to think like a queen or king of their own domain. And that's exactly it, exa- right. Exactly. So if we're going to call me a queen, I hope we're all queens. So we're all showing up. Yeah. And yeah. the haters and the trolls, unfortunately, they feel like they're behind. And I want them beside me or in front of me. Like I, yeah. you know, I'm fine with I being think, a kid. Yeah, I think we need to stop labeling things so much. It's just it's like, a lot. Yeah, like it's because a- it's like we want to like categorize people like you, you know, a bunch of legacy weed people are also like, what the fuck? Like this person <laughs> that doesn't look like us traditionally. Right? right. So like even even those like minor little uh habitual stigmas are still alive and well within the community itself for sure that's like part of the reason what why we called this discipline stoners even because we didn't think that those two were being represented at all so i i wrote i i shared this in like a facebook group about like a bunch of people like sharing their podcasts like it's a Mm -hmm. it's a podcast network and as well intended as this pseudo compliment was from one of the people they were like this lady was like oh what a hilarious oxymoron or something like that and I'm like well that's exactly what we're trying to fucking change Susan right like like that's exactly like yeah. yay like welcome but like that impulse like it came with a compliment that felt like a backhand compliment and it was like oh when like a family oh. member has said well jackie's gone to pot 
Well, since Jackie's gone to pot, she writes for international magazines. She writes for international things. She's been interviewed on every magazine, yeah. our TV I, awards. I'm a kinder, gentler person. I'm a better mother. So I'm a better way. lover. So if I've gone to pot and then all happens, <laughs> call it what you I think want. We all need to go to pot. <laughs> yes, dude. Yes. <laughs> that's, so that's what you say. If you're dealing with anyone in your life, uh, that is a naysayer, just say, I think you need to go, go to, to pot. pot. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? At the end of the summer, right before I, like before harvest and before we cut down, chop down a bunch of plants, I got my son to take a picture with me and one of my cats with these massive plants. And he thought, whatever, my mom wants to do <laughs> selfie again. She's trying to get a picture. And I thought, wouldn't that be amazing that like, Years and years from now, grandkids, great grandkids, the next generations of Jackie Childs will see this picture of this wacky blonde bimbo in her garden with her big fat Garfield cat. She was growing that weed. She's like, I just think what kind of conversations or what kind of thoughts and ideas yes. will, it, will it be illegal? Will it be a banned substance? Will it be like at the markets? Will it be at the vegetable stands? Will it be no big deal? Like, yes. I just, you know, like I just thought it was so. I thought a lot, I think a lot of this conversation and these thoughts that I have now are also because I'm at the, like, I'm at my back nine, right? Like I'm at cool, I'm 48, so I'm half dead. Who actually lives, right? Like I already, so I start, you really, I can't say it enough. When you get to a certain age, whatever that age is for you, it, it things really change. And it didn't matter what parents or grandparents or great grandparents or my old whatever, tried to explain to me or, or show, you had to be in it yourself and the way I think about things now like taking that picture and what generations to come if they see if and when they see it or when I think about hiding things in the wall and leaving a note like just things I do now at this stage of my to leave a piece of me or something to to you know what was your legacy or what I love all this this talk especially with with much younger inspiring minds people that are brave like look at YouTube and like to put your art out there so honestly and raw and to be new to cannabis and like you know when you're asking me these questions and I can tell that you've put thought and research into them and you took a minute like you took your time <laughs> and nothing is more valuable Thank than you. your time like when you get through this at our end of days and you think of your time spent and the time shared and the time passed like these were having this time with me was really special and yeah. I, it's such, I never we don't actually think of that when someone's running late or someone's an hour early or someone are we don't really take a minute and think of the time and how precious <laughs> and important time is and well, I love that you shared this time with me. I know. <laughs> I love sharing this time with you. It was so wonderful. And if we think about it, this moment will like never happen again. Like this never. was that time, this special, <laughs> like how much we, we learned about each other, like learning that even for the first time, like that was so great. This has been so wonderful. I appreciate it. And we'll you. never... And I'll never be as young as I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Look at your young self. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're the Yo. cutest. You really are. You are <laughs> such a doll. And like, I kind of wish you could tell me that you were this nightmare kid and everything sucked and that you evolved into this. So I can like, sometimes a mom just needs a minute to like have some more hope. <laughs> Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Like I'm a fucking nutcase. I've yeah. diagnosed Tourette's. I dropped out of high school. Um, yeah, like all my friends who are crack dealers are in jail now. Like we're for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this is this is alchemy. <laughs> oh, I love and Winnie is so beautiful and kind and smart. Like I, I love know. As a, mom of, as a mom of boys, you're giving me some serious hope here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, blessings. That's the nicest compliment one can get. Yes, I love it. Like, and you're I just the sweetest. You really Thank are. You. Like yeah. you are. The drive home, my Drew, my husband was even saying, he's like, see, aren't you glad people aren't that scary? Maybe you're just hanging around the wrong people. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's, oh my God, that's true. Yeah, energy reflects itself. So I'm definitely glad that we, we resonate and you as well. I, I love how you shine your energy and thank you for sharing it with us. <laughs> oh, Sorry. <my> God. <laughs> no, not at all. You're the best. This is so fun. 
So um, now where do I, where do I watch this? Where do our, where do your fans see this? Where is your, do you, are you on all podcast flat platforms or what do you do? Oh yeah, we, we are, it streams everywhere and on our YouTube. And also we just launched a Patreon. So it's going to be on our Patreon earlier oh. first. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yo, you're so cool. This was such a great conversation. I just had a thought, but I lost it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's the story of my life. Yeah. Yeah. You're so sweet. No, this is awesome. Um, but no, we do a, a segment. Do you have a fun fact? I don't. Really? I know. I don't have a fun fact. Today. Okay. Um, a fun fact? Yo, well, uh, we, we should do the book thing. Yeah, we should do the book. What? Should we ask, ask Jackie to read no, well, what do you want? that could be fun. Okay. Okay. So up to you, either you what? can call the number and I can grab the book or you can <laughs> grab a book. But what we do is usually a segment called, uh, uh, do the Tao where I, I read the Tao Te Ching, which is a book that has like wisdom in it. And we, you can call a number or if you have any, like, inspirational books around or anything we can, we can we, you You're can so flip and you can read <laughs> well what do you want I don't to do? have a, around but i've never done a podcast through my entire house uh, <laughs> I'm so glad I, to get the exclusive. Whoops, did i get dark for a second okay i'm back in the light yes. um i have these little these little buddhist wisdoms can you oh. see me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's so those. I can pull one of these out. Oh. Um, standing near my bone collection. Hello. Um, oh, nice. oh, you with <laughs> bonds now. Well, I collect them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see. know okay. bonds fuck me up. Me, me too. Uh um, and too much. So I I try and just collect them. I have a like, can we see them here? Like, aren't oh. they beautiful? Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Oh, that's the, those are the don't use. But okay. So I pulled from my Buddhist wisdom, the divine masculine is what it's the cards are called. Wow. And it says, it says to me, am I supposed to read it? Yeah. Okay. However many holy words you speak, what good will they do if you do not act upon them? Yes! Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Be more than a hashtag. Oh, that was so wonderful. And it's dark again. (laughs) That's so beautiful that you pulled that. That's so good. Apply. Apply what you know in action, in kindness, in love. Now, what good will will they do if you do not act upon them? Hmm. Mm. That was a good one. Yeah, that. that was beautiful thank you <laughs> and you... i ran through my house which i never do i sit this on a stand with my ring light <laughs> fancy light i put tons of makeup on fake lashes i dress myself all up while everyone tells says oh you're so hot like, <laughs> oh my god this is exactly the version <laughs> of perfect. you that we appreciate them we appreciate all versions of you but this this wonderful Thank you this for being better. so authentic and, and chill with us. And you're such a treat. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You. That it's, was fun. Yeah. You know, so good. It's literally one hour and 11 minutes. It's one eleven. It's so perfect timing. <laughs> oh my well, goodness. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's special. I feel it. I feel this energy. Uh, well, but thank you, you for having me. Yeah. Do you want to uh, give us any plugs or any place where people can find you here? Um, You can find me Jackie Childs anywhere um instagram twitter facebook tiktok uh, it's jackie childs not julia childs that's the chef i don't know how to cook i just know how to eat <laughs> Ooh, i love Perfect. that to pl- find me in kind magazine um a ho- and hopefully when the you know as we're opening up so this spring and summer any sort of markets and events if it's an outdoor thing and there's cannabis i'm usually there <laughs> yes you are i love that okay appreciate you thank you for joining us thank you okay bye guys we'll see you next episode how do i do this here let's go like this